update and we're joined by Jen Carfagno in the lab here and we're going to talk about Patricia and to the untrained eye it's very hard to figure <laughs> out where this is. It doesn't look a lot different than yesterday does it right and yesterday no. we were talking about the potential of a tropical depression that happened yesterday and then last night this happened tropical storm Patricia winds at 40 miles per hour um, and it is disorganized and the hurricane center definitely admits that but um, there is something there and certainly there's evidence I and mean, we look at the models in the future that we need to start warning on this. Right now we have tropical storm watch but then this kind of sticks out in your head like hang on hurricane watch yeah, this thing looks yeah. weak how could it gain that much strength that quickly well uh, it's in an environment that you know is, is conducive to strengthening the water temperature very warm yeah. upper level winds fairly light I want to point out though that Acapulco and then Puerto Vallarta which is up here neither are under the uh, the watches but that doesn't mean they're not going to get bad weather I mean the you know tropical storm right. force winds extend what over 100 uh, miles out 140 miles out for sure um, so here's a look at again the satellite it's hard to pick out the center of circulation so we put on the model winds just to give you a semblance of where the center of circulation is. It's not a tight area. But it but looks like it's, it's going to tighten up, though. It does. It does. Um, water temperature is 86 degrees, and uh. it seems like everything is overachieved, don't you think, this year in the yeah. Asian Pacific? You know, no doubt related to the very warm water temperatures as well as El Nino. So you look at the models, all very much in line. That was their track. And in terms of intensity, too, they're similar. And you look at the increase in wind speed to I think what might be hour. interesting to, you know, some of our viewers out there is, like, what's making it turn to the north? Mm -hmm. And the fact that this big upper level low is causing that, I think yeah. it's really interesting because they seem really far away, I feel like, to an average person. And they really are far away. I mean, we've been talking about rain and thunderstorms in New Mexico and Arizona, yeah. and the upper level low and the big trough that's causing that will eventually help draw this up to the north. And yeah. so right now there's nothing to steer it, which is why it is an environment to um, strengthen. But the moisture from this is going to be tossed into Texas. Yes. So we've got a lot of rain and concerns because there is some tall mountains right in here. Um, Sierra Madre del Sur up to 10,000 feet. Mm. So mudslides flooding. This is an area prone to that anyway with 8 to 12 inches of rain. You know, you see this big batch of dry air though. You're like, wait, is all that moist air going to be able to get through this dry air? Well, there's going to be a link and already you sort of see a link from yep. the Pacific up here into Texas. So when you get some of this moisture up here as well, it's going to be a link that. Yeah. right up into Texas. And so that's going to lead to our concerns for perhaps too much rain. Needed rain, yes, in Texas, but could it be too much? That's, of course, one of our main concerns. And it starts, first starts in West Texas and then shifts all the way to Eastern Texas. All right, just real quick on Olaf. It is weakening, but still 130 miles per hour. Still out here, you know, far enough away from Hawaii to have direct impacts, but there'll be some surf and high surf advisories are up. All right, Jen, thank you. Reynolds, over to you.